You might be wondering why there's a picture of an airing cupboard behind me um, and what that has to do with women in the media and feminism. And uh, the short answer is absolutely nothing. Um, it has nothing to do with women in the media, absolutely nothing to do with feminism. Um, but it does have to do with where I was living in uh, February 2012, which is when I set up the Vagenda with my friend Rhiannon. I had just graduated right into the recession, and I was literally living in an airing cupboard, almost exactly the same as this. Um, when I first got a book deal out of the Vagenda, uh, my editor sent me back some notes, and the first thing she said was, you know, you can't be over dramatic about your life, you know, it can't have been an actual airing cupboard if it had a bed in it and things like that, and you know, you lived there for seven weeks, and I was like, it didn't have a bed in it. I mean, it was an airing cupboard. I literally was living in an airing cupboard. And um, so me and my friend decided to set up this online magazine because we both had really terrible jobs that weren't paying anything, and I was living in her cupboard, and we thought, well, we'll do something to entertain ourselves. We set up this blog, and we called it The Vagenda because it was the silliest name that we could think of. And um, we gave it the tagline, like King Lear, but for girls. And the reason we gave it that um, tagline was because we had read it in Grazia that week, and it had been talking about the Margaret Thatcher biopic, the film that had just come out, and that's how it described um, the Iron Lady, like King Lear, but for girls. And um, I thought, at what point did we get to, in the media, where we have women's magazines that say, this is like Shakespeare, but for women. This can't be a point that we're at. And so we set up this blog, and um, we thought nothing of it, really. We were sort of taking the piss out of women's magazines a little bit and um, the stock images that come with them. And we went to bed, and in the morning we woke up and 60,000 people had already looked at it. And we were absolutely astounded, and that's now up to 20 million. And people just kept coming back, just kept then pitching to us saying, I live in India, I live in the United States, I live in Australia, and these are my experiences of the media, these are my experiences of being a woman and sexism. And they continue to do that, and it just showed that it was actually striking a chord with people. So for me, I had two watershed moments that made me want to set up this blog. And um, the first one is sort of shown behind me, and it's, it was found in an issue of Cosmopolitan. And it was, on the one side, there was this big feature called Body News, and the essential message behind it is, be confident within yourself, love your own body, and then your own beauty will shine through. All you need is self-confidence. And that was directly juxtaposed on the other side with a massive plastic surgery advert where the woman is holding up a big placard saying, I've just had my breasts done, but the biggest change you'll see is on my face. And I think what I find most sinister about that is that the ad has taken from the editorial on the other side, has taken this idea that confidence is really central to your being and has used it to push. You need to change your looks to really get that confidence. And this is why women's magazines can be so sinister, because they use insecurity marketing. So a lot of what's inside of these magazines um, is sort of product driven. And to get you to buy the products, they need to make you feel insecure about something, they need to keep creating those problems, and they can't exist without the advertising revenue. So that's how this all comes together. The other thing that really um, was the watershed moment for me was a, um, a study that appeared in Adweek, which is a magazine for people who work in advertising, and it was done um, a couple of years ago, and it was called When Do Women Feel Most Insecure? And they had done this huge sort of push on asking women, when do you feel really, really bad about yourselves? And they'd come back and they'd been like, okay, there was a lot of data, sort of 9 a.m. right down to 6 p.m. into midnight, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, et cetera. When do you feel worst? They'd found out when women feel worst about themselves, and they'd concluded, this is ample opportunity to market to women. So what you really need to do is catch them when they're most insecure, and then you can really, really go for it, like shove your products down their throat. And that's how advertisers think of women. Elsewhere, you have things like Grazia, which always have, um, always generally have three or maybe one woman, um, and they'll be in this sort of distress situation. So when we started, the Vagenda started to get really, really popular, we talked to people who were working within the magazine industry, and um, one of them told us, on the front of Grazia, we always call it distress in a dress. So they would always have women, um, just in various, you know, one of them smiling here, um, 
in various poses, and it would say something like it does here, inside the Broken Hearts Club, or it would say, you know, meltdown, breakdown, etc., etc. And it was this constant portrayal of women in emotional distress, usually also connected to their weight, um, which was just pushing these negative stereotypes of women all the time, really old stereotypes. But if you read this every week, it really, really gets into your head. And then, of course, there were the really outdated, kind of tame, kind of stupid sex tips. So this is just you know, a compilation of a few Cosmo ones. You can sort of see a pattern here. Make him want you inside his sex brain, secrets of male arousal, 50 things you should never do in bed, men tell all, drive him wild, get in his head. All of this stuff really based around the idea that sex is something that women have done to them and men do. And women, they don't have that much control over their or autonomy and the sexuality. It's really, it's to do with men, it's driving him wild, and usually it's because you want to keep him, you want to trap him in a relationship. It's nothing to do with your own sexual pleasure. It's nothing to do with taking control of your own life. It's this very outdated view about, you know, if you do something wrong, this is 50 things you should never do in bed, then he will probably leave you, and you should always be keeping up with these tricks, but don't be a slut, you know, just be like a kind of slutty girlfriend. So, I mean, sort of in that vein, what do donuts, bolognese sauce, and strippers all have in common? These are all three, connected to three of the most stupid sex tips I came across when I was doing this book with my friend Rhiannon. One of them was um, slip a donut onto your boyfriend's penis and then nibble it off. Um, if you've ever looked at the hole of a donut, it's quite small. And so <laughs> it would be a fairly disappointing sexual experience in the first place. I advise you that if you can slip a donut on your boyfriend's penis, not to even bother nibbling it off. <laughs> um, bolognese sauce. Um, this was a particularly bizarre sort of sex tip that said, um, you know, wait until your boyfriend gets home, at which point you also have to wonder about the assumption that you would be sort of in the home in the first place while he was out to work. And... Um, cook him a bolognese because, you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, and then put the sauce on your nipples and just wear high heels, and when he comes in, just go, you know what I want. And um, <laughs> I just think about what would happen if I did that to a man in my life, and I don't think his first thought would be, yes, take me now. I think it would be, oh, my God, she's flipped. <laughs> so... Strippers also was one of my favorite ones um, because a girl who was contributing to the agenda tried it out. So there's always one in Cosmopolitan saying, you know, act like a stripper for your boyfriend, you know, do him a little striptease. And um, she said, you know, I went home to my very feminist boyfriend and I was doing this striptease and he just ended up saying that he was thinking about all these horrible things that happen to people who strip for money and he got really upset and we ended up role-playing human trafficking victim and kindly policeman <laughs> and then we just cuddled all night while he softly wept. <laughs> and so, you know, doesn't go well for that many people, it turns out. So, I mean, this is all very well and good, and we kind of laugh at them, but a lot of people do feel this pressure. But then when you look at things like cold baths, open windows, and cavemen, these are all things connected to their diet tips, and these are actually quite dark. Cold baths and open windows are both things that were in magazines recommending, basically, that if you do something that makes you shiver, then you will burn more calories. And so you should have cold baths and then open your windows in the middle of winter, and um, you should eat like a caveman the rest of the time. So basically, I don't know, chew on sticks, um, sort of eat raw food and things like that. And so when you really delve into some of the tips that they're pushing, they're quite sinister. And so they're actually, you know, a lot of it is, is very, very negative, and it's having a negative effect on people. We see, we go into schools, we talk to people who are in schools, and they say, you know, I feel this pressure all the time. Um, elsewhere, you know, it's not just women's magazines. There are things here, um, sort of, as you can see, general adverts, even, you know, reportedly um, respectable magazines like Newsweek, where you can see that's 101 best places to eat in the world, and it's basically a woman giving asparagus a blowjob. And, you know, then we had pot noodle last year, peel the top off a hottie, and we had the seven-incher from Burger King saying it'll blow your mind away with a woman with her mouth wide open. And all of this stuff, eventually, you get bombarded with it. I'm sure all of the women in the room know, and um, I'm sure a lot of the men in the room have noticed it. It has an effect on your psyche, and we don't have to live in this world where a bottle of water has a picture of a woman's bum on it, or where 
everybody's giving a blowjob to some kind of food. Like, it's just not necessary. And when it's everywhere, it's just, you get told that it's boundary pushing, and it's always pushing the boundaries in the same way. So I really don't accept that any of it's edgy at all. Um, sort of, finally, we did a, um, an interesting... Uh, an interesting experiment with the Vagenda last year where we said, um, take, some, take some headlines from various places and just redo them um, into what they really should say because some of them are really, really stupid, the way that the women are being portrayed. So this one on TMZ was one of my favorite ones that somebody sent in on Twitter. And um, it was George Clooney reportedly engaged a hot, successful lawyer. And somebody sent one in saying, um, incredibly successful human rights lawyer may be connected to graying actor 52. And um, I really like that one. There was also, what will the other Kardashians say? Courtney lets her fashionable family down as she goes for lunch in baggy sweatpants. And um, somebody just sent one in saying, family probably does not disown woman over wearing tracksuit. And um, so when you really break this stuff down, you see how ridiculous it is. But when you get it every single day into your head, then you're not breaking it down, and I think it's really important with satire just to draw attention to it because it is so incredibly ridiculous. Um, also, it's worth bearing in mind that they start women, particularly young girls, on this very, very young. So if you look at some of the headlines behind me, they're all taken from the Daily Mail. They're all about Suri Cruz. Every single one of them, she's the child of Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise, um, if you didn't know that. And um, all of these headlines were written when she was under the age of four. So really take that in. Things like Surrey Cruise ventures out on a chilly night with bare legs, impeccable as ever, made up little madam with her glossy red lips. This sort of stuff is very voyeuristic, sort of pervy stuff on the Daily Mail. It starts very, very, very young. Um, the Hoop of Horror, the Circle of Shame, very well-known in Heat magazine. They stopped doing it recently. But um, I think it's important to sort of realize how often female celebrities are zeroed in on how often we come across this sort of body destruction and sort of make sure that we target it, make sure that we laugh at it, because otherwise you see it on yourself all the time. I know that I did. This is the reason that I set up the agenda with my friend. I was looking in the mirror. I was seeing it. I was seeing things like stars lose their fight with cellulite and thinking this is the most horrible thing because people are going to be looking at me, are going to be judging me, are going to be thinking that about me because I've been told all my life that first I have to be attractive and then I have to be successful, but mainly attractive. And that is something that can be very, very damaging. Finally, how to do feminism wrong. Um, Cosmopolitan did this um, a couple of years ago. Can you have be a feminist? And um, this is something that I get asked all the time ever since I've been in feminism. Um, can you do this and be a feminist? Can you do that and be a feminist? Is it okay if I wear makeup? Is it, is it okay if I'm a guy? Is it okay if I, you know, anything, basically? And um, the good news is that I'm here to categorically tell you feminism is about gender equality. It's about, you know, getting involved with that whatever way you want, through satire, through being angry, through being funny, through just living your life, whatever, being a guy, being a girl, it doesn't matter. So the good news for all of you is that you can vajazzle away. Please do. Actually, please don't. But um, either way, gender equality is for all of us. We all first need to laugh at it, and then we need to change the world. Thank you. <laughs>